I did give them five pictures. I gave them a choice though as to pick from one or two batches of pictures because we are actually currently doing immunity and disease. Our previous unit was adaptations over time, evolution. So I'll show you the evolution one first. I gave them five pictures. One of them was a picture of a little boy holding a beetle. I was hoping, praying that the kids would realize perhaps this is Charles Darwin as a boy being very interested in animals. And about half the class picked up on that. You know, some people threw them in the middle, but most of them had them at the top left. Um, there's also a picture of Darwin's book, uh, Natural Selection, The Origin of Species. We have a picture of the HMS Beagle, um, a tortoise from the Galapagos and the chain of islands, the Galapagos Islands. So what I also had them do was, in their story, they had to insert at least five or six vocab words from the actual unit that I had picked out. So one of those vocab words is variation. One of them was um, an archipelago, a chain of islands. Um, and one of them was, what is a, or a species? The other one was on immunity and disease. And these guys gave us the title, The Smallpox Virus Infects the U.S. Um, I also have another one that's titled, Pesky Pathogens Are Potential Problems. There's some alliteration going on. Um, this one, I just chose five random pictures. Um, I didn't necessarily want them to be sequenced in any particular order. This one was more just random. I wanted them to come up with a story and throw that vocab, like, um, what is a pathogen? I wanted that in there. I wanted acquired immunity, passive immunity, those types of terms. So I gave them a picture of a patient in an ICU, um, some type of pathogen. I told them they can make it up as to what they think it is. Um, a picture of a white blood cell, a bio-universal hazard kit, maybe that people would wear in such an epidemic, pandemic and then a picture, it looks like a lot of people in hospital beds. So they came up with pretty cool stories. It worked out really well. So, so you, you covered a lot of content with this exercise. Yeah, absolutely. It's tied together. It's great. I'll, I'll go next because I used Paul's rubric and his introduction page that I uh, stole from, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, I was inspired by. Good. I changed it a little bit because I'm in sixth grade science and I did not have the kids add vocab from the unit, although I could easily tie that in there. I didn't, I didn't do that with this one. It was the first go at it. I wanted to see how they were going to do. Um, I also didn't have any poster paper and so uh, I decided to just use folders and it turned out to work really well for me. And I'll probably continue doing that because it's uh, wow, nice. essentially a nice. little like a poster paper, but now you know I can walk around. And it's so portable. It's easier to grade. It's portable. They put their name on the tag, I love that. and then inside of it, I gave them a folder with the rubric and and a, a sheet of the five pictures. They had to cut the pictures out, so everything was in there. They sat down. They got a folder, and it turned it. it you know, it ended up being their. Uh, their, their poster. Very cool. So we're studying atmosphere right now in science and then we're moving into space. Um, so I decided to take these five pictures. Uh, one is a meteorite, an asteroid. One is a uh, kind of a new age space shuttle. This is a random picture of swirling lights. Now here's an astronaut doing a spacewalk and here's kind of a mining expedition. Looks like uh, an iron mine of some sort on Earth. Um, and, you know, it's just really neat that they would do these and depending on the group, the pictures were in all different order, which is what we're kind of striving for. And because I also teach an intensive writing class, um, I really talked about the five paragraph essay. You know, your introduction, three body paragraphs, and your conclusion is really all that this is. And these visuals, this is what I want when you guys are writing your five paragraph essays in class. I want you to have these in your head. Make up your own visuals for each paragraph. Have one main image that sticks in your head for that paragraph. And that's and really, really got moving. That. That's yeah. really moving to the digital essay. Yeah, and they really, they really understood that. So like this, this is going to sum up their whole introduction. That picture, of that asteroid. Now I gave them these pictures, but you can make these up in your head. You can visualize them yourself, and it'll help you when you're writing. 
So I, I tied that piece in, which was really good. Um, I did model one for them. I didn't want to do it, and Paul and I were talking about this first, because I didn't want them to like use any ideas and think that they had to start with any particular picture. So I just did this. I said, this is what I essentially want yours to look like. Put your five pictures there, write a paragraph for each. And, you know, that was, that was basically it. Look the whole thing was done in 45 minutes, from start to finish. Wow. From giving them the folder to receiving this was done in 45 minutes in one class period. So that was, that was really, I, I allotted two class periods for it. And it was one group that I think took it home and finished it, but it really, it was, it was amazing how much they got done in one class period. So that was really cool. Sean, you wanna? Um, is, is each project designed to work as one piece of writing, or are they are the paragraphs sort of separate and unrelated? No, it's one story. So yeah, essay. there are there are five image stories. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's basically it's it's a five paragraph essay. Now. Obviously, if you were to turn, you know, you'd have to elaborate, but why couldn't you do this sure. first to start to get past that writer's block and then say, okay, now take this and use that to construct, you know, a full length five paragraph essay by adding, you know, more, more depth, more details, more transitions. But starting with that is, is a lot better than starting with, you know, just kind of a blank piece of paper. So it worked out really well. Um, So I'll pass. You have a lot of examples there. Another one down. If you I love the folder. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Because, you know, the paper becomes so flimsy to hold, to keep, to preserve. Yeah, and then carrying it around, and I don't know. I mean, it, I want to, I want, I would like to say that, you know, it, it kind of just happened by accident. But, <laughs> you know. Those are the best ways. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. And it was really. I don't know, it was really just organized because I was able to just give everybody a folder and everything they needed was in there and the directions were there, the rubric was yeah. there, the pictures. And this just hung up on my board, so they that's why they, they were all done the same way. They were all lined on the left. And, and I just hung that up on the board and that was it. And then they just went with it. I didn't really, I just walked around and, and stopped in on each group. How you guys doing? You know, looks good. But it was It was a lot easier than I thought. It was great. Thanks, Lucas. Wow. Well, so you gave them all the same? All the same pictures. Okay. And the, basically, they had to go from the perspective of the water, water molecule, which is a voyage. So I was trying to install the water cycle. They haven't had any, obviously, they have background in the water cycle. They've seen it before. Um, I'm doing the weather unit right now, talking about air pressure, but I haven't talked about like transpiration, condensation, maybe briefly. In the front of the reference tables, um, but this one is good. It's based on Mean Girls. A bunch of girls did it. I don't. I can't read it from here, but I don't know, so I'm just gonna hold it, and I or you can read it for me, whichever is better for me. Thanks. Thanks. So um, Regina is a water molecule. She was swimming in the ocean when she evaporated into the clouds while on vacation with her boyfriend. <laughs> Regina's boyfriend, Aaron, is cheating on her with a blank, 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 human. Regina slowly drips down the mirror in disbelief. Aaron's condensation for the human grows. Uh, so she put the word condensation in there. <laughs> um, it's kind of hard to follow, but I'm okay. Aaron and the human hit the club, not knowing that Regina is disguised as dry ice. <laughs> <laughs> which is the process of sublimation, which we talk about. Um, Aaron then takes out the human, takes the human out for dinner, but little does he know that Regina is on the glass watching everything. <laughs> As Aaron brings the human home, Regina's temperature becomes so boiled that in the con condensating mist, she suffocates the human with her cold, thick mist. Regina, <laughs> the water molecule has committed a murder. <laughs> so it's just fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So I just tried to pick different phases, like you know, they, basically what they learned from this was sublimation, the dry eyes, because we talked about each thing, each picture, and what kind of process we be talking about in each picture. Um, so that's basically it. So if you have to list all the learning 
all the concepts that were covered, wow. all the skills that were developed in this one so, well, sort kind of fun. Of my, my thing is, is that I feel like I know. I think they so most of them knew what condensation was. Some may have not. I don't know if they actually learned it here. If they used the words perfect or correctly in every single instance. Um, but I was able to assess that, you know, like condensating. She got so boiled, she condens condensation actually releasing energy. So she should have vaporized. <laughs> so I yeah. know that she didn't know that correctly, <laughs> you know. But so, but they didn't, you know, it's the beginning of the unit. So I guess somewhat of an assessment of vocabulary. And um, so as far as that, it took me 45 minutes to do all this, I don't know if they, if the time, the, I mean, it was fun for them, but as far as being content driven, my test, I don't know if I used the time wisely to give content. That's my only thing. But they had a good time. They had a great time. There's a lot, you know, there's Bob the Molecule, and, you know, boys did that. Bob. Everybody now, you said you hadn't taught them the water cycle. No, but we, taught, we mentioned how. Um, we, we just talked about the reference table. They have like how much, how many joules per gram is needed for condensation, and we talked about that briefly. But we talked about the water cycle. But they see that it's a cycle, and you can go into different phases, right? Well, it'd be interesting if after you've done it, you've taught it, you gave them the pictures again right. and seen what story they read it up. Yeah, and how they use the vocab. That could be like a, a pre post test, right, exactly. you know? This was more In a much more interesting way. Or a story revision. Yeah, they could yeah, edit it and add more pictures or something. Okay, Amelia, what do you share? Mine is so simple like this, it's going to look like. Um, I use mine mostly because, um, again, content driven, I have certain things I have to get to by my midterm. And we were finishing off pedigree studies and heredity, modern genetics, and doing DNA and protein synthesis. So there wasn't a whole lot that I. See, I had time to do a whole period of this. So I gave this to them more as a homework assignment, um, as a review for pedigree charts. I actually gave them two sheets of paper. I just copied out of one. I gave them directions on one side. Um, I gave them a whole group of males and females with different blood types. And they're sort of reviewing blood types because they haven't really, they've gotten it, but they haven't gotten it. Some of them are confused and some of them aren't. Um, then I gave them on a separate sheet of paper a blank pedigree and said, OK, your child, the child here, is going to be O-type blood. Well, they have to then remember what the O-type blood type looks like, and they had to pick it out of this side. And I asked them to cut them out, paste them on there. Well, they didn't all do that. Um, it could make four or five different arrangements, so that was kind of the idea of arranging the pictures and then telling me a story with the pedigree chart. So I had quite a few people come up with different ways of doing it, um, putting the child's in, some drew them on there, um, some of them cut and paste them again like they were supposed to and rearranged them as they went. <laughs> I'm not going to show you the ones that were drawn because they were pretty bad, some of them. Um, but they put on it, what I asked them to do is say, okay, if you line this up, then a couple questions. Um, are there any other arrangements? And they wrote a little bit on the back. Are there any other arrangements? How would it arrange? How would it change it? Uh, then I asked them if I changed the dad, which I only made one A, I for the dad, and that had to be the dad. Um, and I said, okay, if you changed him, how is it going to change everything else? Who is going to get changed? How would the parents change? How would the, the little boy change, or girl in this case, how would they change? And explain the, pair of the pedigrees. So that was kind of the review for doing a pedigree chart, using the pictures and have them kind of tie it together. So it's a little different tactic, but I was, um, I think most of them got it. They got a better idea of what they were doing. Um, <clears throat> they kept asking me if this was right. I said, there is no right way. There are about three or four different ways to do it. Actually, some of them came up with ways I hadn't thought of, trying to rearrange it. Um, and they came up with being able to understand who went where. Because one person had them all lined up with, I said, we have no, no homosexual marriages here, guys. Remember, they're males and females. Oh. <laughs> then somebody just wrote the letters. I said, well, who's the mother and who's the father? Oh, that's what you're supposed to. I said, yeah, remember? So, oh, yeah, they went back and they rearranged them and everything because they had the wrongs and lined up with people. I said, no, we're normal people here. <laughs> so they all got to laugh about that. Um, but that's the way I used it in this case, to have them do that. And I think they got a better idea out of it. It was a review mainly review for what they were trying to do. We had a test the next day, so that's mm -hmm. like how I did it. Thank you. How they do the test? Uh, pretty good. They're getting, I think they finally have a better idea of pedigree of blood types, because trying to always remember who gets what um, is kind of hard, and looking at male and female. So they still now even, we have another one uh, coming up. That was a quiz the next day. We have another test coming up, and I'm again giving them today, while I'm out, another pedigree to work on. To think when you have more than just two types, blood, of course, is three, three four different combinations, how to think through the combination. You know, think back, well, if you have the child, how does it get there? And uh, we use um, uh, 
sex link traits also, so not only having a little keeping on the extra chromosome and how it goes. So having to think spatially about it, where it's going back, and they're having a little, they're getting it slowly. But they're, they're getting it. And they like to draw the pictures and things like that. So. That's great. Mm -hmm. Javina? Um, mine is not content driven at all. It was uh, a way to introduce sequencing. So um, I used it as a mini lesson. So I just talked about, you know, how sequencing tells a logical story and, you know, how we as writers kind of come up with the sequence of, of our thoughts. So um, I, just like Lucas, kind of just explained the strategy and just facilitated the rest. So I put up five in images. Um, I put them into two groups. So... Um, So just winter scenes, because we just came off of um, winter break. So um, it was just interesting to see, one, they kind of talked it out, what the way they thought it was going in their head. And then they kind of worked together to come up with an arrangement and a story. So there's a picture of a window showing that it snowed out, a cup of hot cocoa, um, scarf, hat and mittens, a snowman and a dog wandering in the snow. So, uh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, as I looked outside, I noticed that my dog had got out. So I put on my hat, gloves, gloves and scarves, and ran outside to get him. After I found my dog, I made a snowman. My mom came out and gave me some hot cocoa, or chocolate, to warm me up, and we all walked home together. So, kind of cute. I forgot to bring my actual finished product I left at the middle school. But basically I did this to start my unit on Westward Expansion. So I showed them all the pictures in a PowerPoint and I explained what they would be doing. But then I really let them be creative and kind of predict what they thought would happen. So I had pictures of Native Americans, Transcontinental Railroad, the different uses of a buffalo, um, settlers killing the buffalo, so put them into groups. I gave them big pictures. It ended up looking a lot like Jen's finished product, and they just had the class period, big poster paper, and were pretty creative in their stories. And a lot of them were pretty close. I hadn't really taught them any of the vocab yet, but they were able to figure out reservations. They were able to figure out some other words, and then. At the end of the unit, I want to kind of go back and have them, not as a whole project, do it again, but show the pictures again, and then have them. So pre and post again. Yeah. yeah. That's great. That's great. I was introducing um, the age of discovery, and we had just done some vocabulary. Um, so. I love I love this because it was very easy to set up and like most of them just took one class period. We we looked back at it again the next class period, but I gave them five pictures and you know I had in my in my own head the way I thought that the pictures should be ordered, but I told them you know it's you have to decide for yourselves where you think this is going. Um, so I have a picture of a map of the Crusades. Jewels and silks and spices and astrolab and compass and then Columbus meeting the Native Americans and then the Colombian exchange, the trade that took place once um, you know once that discovery took place. And so I had them use vocabulary within their captions and I didn't have them do a paragraph. I think I might do that next time. I just wanted a, a caption, one or two sentences, but a, kind of a quick hitting. You know, tell me tell me what this means to you in. in as little as possible, little words as possible. Um, and so they came up with these stories based on the what we had discussed um, in introducing the, the unit and also with the vocabulary. So I don't know, do you want me to read? I don't know if you want me to read. Yeah, yeah the captions are okay, pretty short. Okay, so we have um, the Crusaders traveled to the east to try to capture the Holy Land from the Muslim Turks. They didn't capture them in their land, but instead they found riches from the east to trade. Um, after finding the riches, they were able to use new and improved compasses for uh, further sea travel. And with new and improved compasses, Columbus tried to travel west instead of east to find an all-water route to Asia. 
but instead he found a new world and came into contact with the Native Americans. After Columbus found the Americas, the Columbian Exchange was established and the new world and the old world traded goods. And so once the kids were done with it, we put them all up, because this is like the sticky, like the post-it notes, we put them all up next to each other and talked about you know, why people put certain things first, did we notice anything similar, all of them had the Columbian Exchange last, so we just kind of looked at them and, and talked about how we think, how we see things differently, how we perceive things, and um, you know, what we thought of each other's posters. Basically. That's great. It was really good. I, I liked it because they were able to use the vocabulary, they were able to write, they were able to share, and it took place all in 45 minutes. You're a poster child for uh, the five in your story. <laughs> it's great.